Because the topic of today's lesson is software architecture, it seemed appropriate to start the lesson by asking a world expert on this topic, what is software architecture and why it is important. To do that, let's fly to California and more precisely to Los Angeles and visit Professor Nino Medvidovich. Hi, I'm here visiting Professor Nino Medvidovic from the University of Southern California. And Nino is one of the world experts in uh, software architecture, actually the, one of the authors sort of, of a recent book, uh, which is sort of the book in uh, software architecture. And what I'd like to discuss with Nino is the concept of software architecture and its importance, because people are very familiar with the idea and the concept of design, and software architecture is something that is very related to that, but it's less known. So I would like for uh, Nino to elaborate on that and tell us why is it important to focus also on the specific you know, architectural aspects of uh, software. When you build any software system, even a simple, relatively simple one, you're going to go through uh, a process of making many, many design decisions. Hundreds or thousands, sometimes even tens of thousands of design decisions. Uh, so any program that you write, at some point you get to deciding what the interface of a particular method is going to be. Are you going to put in a parameter that is an integer or a float? Uh, when you're writing a routine of, of some sort, you have to decide whether you're going to use a static data structure or a dynamic data structure. All of these things are design decisions. Many of them, however, will typically, in the average case, not really impact the success of your system and the long-term well-being of your system. But typically the things that software engineers start struggling with are other design decisions. Design decisions that are the equivalent of uh, load-bearing walls in a building. Mm -hmm. These are the things that, if you don't get them right, or if you compromise them, will in fact potentially um, impact uh, how the system operates, they might result in uh, failures of uh, different kinds, they may result in a system that is not easily main maintainable and so forth. In a sense, to make the long story short, architectural design decisions are really the principal design decisions in your system. These are the things that are very important. All the other design decisions you could sort of tag with as being important, but they're sort of below this very important or highly important uh, threshold. So if you need to change a low-level design decision, sometimes it's kind of easy to do. You might change the data structure. Is it the case that you know, being the architecture sort of the pillar of the software, is that going to be much more difficult to change an architectural decision? And architecture is deemed to be, you know, if you start with the wrong architecture, the software is going to you know, necessarily be unsuccessful, or you can also do something in that respect. A system could be successful and very poorly architected. Just like a building or uh, an airplane or a car, any other engineering artifact could be successful but poorly architected. So success, we can separate from this. But the, the point that you make in, in asking this question is an important one. The non-architectural design decisions should be on the average. There are exceptions and we need to acknowledge that there is no one size fits all uh, type of solution for anything in software engineering really. But on the average, the non-architectural design decisions should be much easier to make. So the scale of the consequences of making such a change really can vary from very minor, highly localized to very important and uh, sometimes even system-wide. To conclude, I'd just like to ask you about some concept that is, uh, we hear about a lot, which is architectural erosion, since we're talking about, you know, what we define architectures and software evolution. So what is exactly architectural erosion and why does that happen? So to go back to our non-software metaphors, imagine you buy a car and your car has four wheels, it has a steering wheel, it has a nice chassis, it looks pretty nice. At one point, uh, you end up replacing its 150 horsepower engine with a 250 horsepower engine because that's what you want. Then you start putting a spoiler on the back of the car, and then you replace the headlights, and then you replace the side view mirrors with smaller ones because you want your car to be more aerodynamic. And then you start tinkering with other things, like you cut the maybe the roof of the car because you want to turn it into a convertible, etc. And in the end, what you have is a car that is still your car, it looks very different, its structural and behavioral properties are very different. And what you might find is that the car doesn't handle nearly as well, for example, in a very sharp turn, it might not be able to negotiate a steep hill as well because you've pretty much changed it all along the way. Architectural erosion in the case of a software system is the exact same thing, with one huge caveat. Very few, if any of us, will ever uh, put a new engine into our car or tinker with the structural soundness of the car by cutting off the roof, etc. In a software system, we do it all the time. 
we'll add a feature, we'll change one bit of the user interface here, we'll port it to a new platform, some kind of a, a mobile platform, for example. And pretty soon, what you end up with is really a software system that, that is uh, maybe a distant relative of your original system. It is a mutant in many ways because Oftentimes these little tinkerings happen on a one-off basis. There is no overarching vision for how you should do this. So you are basically going through a, a subsequent set of steps where you're making locally optimal decisions for any one of these changes. And what you might end up finding is that the globally optimal behavior of the system is badly compromised. The structural soundness, in a sense, of the system is badly compromised. The non-functional properties of the system could be seriously affected. This is how security flaws creep into systems. This is how reliability flaws. This is how the usability of a system uh, oftentimes suffers. Uh, and most importantly for software engineers, the people who actually build the software, the maintainability of the system becomes a huge problem. Because now you're looking at this thing, it's got all of these various appendages, its original design has pretty badly eroded, and yet somehow you have to figure out how to keep fixing it, making sure that it operates in a continuous uh, fashion because many of these systems live for 20, 30, 40 years. Thank you so much for your insight. This is a perfect introduction for our lesson. So we'll get to the lesson now. And Thank you very much. Thank you.